gotta go, okay? Mm -hmm. Daddy gotta work. I'm working, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Why are you so excited? Because I'm excited. Me? Oh, yeah. Or are they are they hearing us? I think they're hearing us. Are you guys talking? Because I can't hear you if you are. Uh oh. Uh. Skype, I think I lost you. There you go. I, I can hear you now. Okay, cool. Okay. Hi, everybody. Oh. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Surprise. Uh, out there in uh, stream land. <clears throat> this is Stephen Sharif, creative director here at Intrepid Studios. I'm joined by Jeffrey Bard, lead designer. Hi, everybody. And game designer Peter Pallone. How's it going? <clears throat> um, we're excited to be here. We have an amazing guest uh, who's going to be asking some awesome questions today. One of my personal favorite Twitch streamers out there when it comes to the MMORPG community. Doc Got Game, everybody. What is up? Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Ready? <laughs> what is up, guys? <clears throat> Doc, I got to tell you, when, uh, when we heard that you were going to be our guest today, um, I was super ecstatic because you have always been one of my favorite MMORPG specific Twitch streamers um, just because of your passion for the genre. I think you have a great show and uh, you have awesome input when it comes to the industry and when it comes to just MMORPGs and MMORPGs in general. So I was really excited to, to be able to do this with you. I know we all are. Yeah, totally. No, I'm, I'm stoked and I'm so happy for you guys. I mean, you guys know how to put on a Kickstarter. Let me tell you, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> One minute I look up, I, I mean, I look up and I'm like, okay, cool. You know, they're they're trucking along quite nicely. The next thing I know, you guys are already surpassing the goal and everything. So congratulations to you guys on an amazing <laughs> freaking Kickstarter. I and mean, it's nowhere near over. I I, I, I haven't put anything in there yet. So hold on a little bit. <laughs> what? Whoa, hold look on. this. Hold, right, give me cut a, the stream. Right. <laughs> give, me, give me a few minutes here, guys. No, it has been totally <laughs> awesome. And we, we couldn't do it without everybody out there. Um, you know, it's 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 been one heck of a ride, and it's only been a week. I know. Yeah, so, officially uh, one week today. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're we're three thousand dollars away from hitting our one million five hundred thousand dollar mark. Um, that unlocks our expanded naval content, additional ships, and um, content under the water. So yeah. we're pretty excited about that. We it got might happen on this stream. Ooh, that would be awesome. See. No. Got my fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we can't hear Doc. <clears throat> yeah. Doc? Oh, Doc's yep. there. Can you guys hear me? Oh, no, yeah, we got you. We got you. You got me? Okay, cool. Oh, cool I got cool, cool. him. I'll put the mic a little closer to my mouth oh. here. I have him Jeff, super low. Jeff doesn't have Doc. Neither does Ma uh, Peter. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so let's make sure we got that. Doc, give us a test real quick. Sure, sure. Test, test, test. One, two, one, two. Microphone check. Yes, there we go. Oh, yeah. I don't have him. You got him for Peter. Check, check. Got it for Peter. One, two, one, two. Not Microphone Jeff, check. Though. Jeff's the first him. one. He's good for me. All right, he's good for Peter. <laughs> yeah! I don't have him. You still don't have him? No. Here, he's check like, this He's thing. like silent. Are you sitting on it, uh, Jeff? It shouldn't be silent. You're sitting on it. There we go. And then plug that so in. So I think we were just changing the levels a little there bit before the stream. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. All right, sorry about that, guys. Can you test so, again? Um, 
I literally oh, can't. Doc, how about now? Check, check. Testing. Yep, testing. Oh, testing. we're good. Okay, okay we're good. We okay. got it. Okay, and we're back. <clears throat> so, sorry about that little audio t uh, slip up. Uh, so, Doc, you got some pretty awesome questions. We don't know exactly what all the questions are that you have, but that's just the way that we like it here. So, uh, if you want to give us some uh, some pretty tough ones, you're welcome to. Sure, sure. No, I, I appreciate it. You guys <laughs> have been. I've I watched uh, a couple of the uh, the other well the other two. Uh, pieces of them and you guys have been very open so I'm, I'm ready to get going here um, if if I do uh, ask a question that you guys have already answered feel free to just shut up doc we got that covered and I'll move on to the next one you know so um, good. but uh, I, I figured I'd warm you guys up a little bit start off with some general questions and then get down to the nitty-gritty um, we be focusing a little bit on PvP and, and guilds because that's you know Steve you know that's what I love. So oh, oh, I know, um, I know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I guess the first question would be, as the first major MMO gaining traction in the Unreal Engine, how do you feel mm -hmm. you guys are going to hold up on a technical level? How do you feel the Unreal Engine is going to is going to um, is going to work? I mean, do, do you feel that it can live up to the expectations of you and and the community? Well, that's definitely a really good question, and I'll let Jeff answer a little bit of it. But first, I just want to let you know, you know, Unreal Engine, um, uh, being an engine created by Epic, is is a really versatile engine that offers access to the to the source code and allows us to get into that back end and customize all the networking code that we need to do um, from us as developers in order to accommodate the goals that we have in game when it comes to large battles, uh, whether it be PvP or PvE raids that we intend to have. Um, and you know, Epic has awesome support. We have amazing engineers here yep. in the uh, in the studios, engineers who have been working with MMORPGs specifically for over 15 years, wow. um, and have done a lot of that networking code. So we feel extremely confident um, that Unreal 4 is going to be able to <clears throat> to allow us that 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 versatility and customization that we can introduce our own proprietary networking code. Uh, when it comes to accommodating those goals. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we can say it pretty simply in that we haven't run into anything that is going to be causing a problem. Um, you know, it's it's it, the flexibility of it has been amazing, um, and like Stephen said, the support that they give us is pretty incredible. Um, so so yeah, there's there's so far so good. There haven't been any problems. All of our tests have been really good, really positive. Um, so <laughs> our guys know what they're doing, and the Epic guys know what they're doing, and together we form Voltron. So it's it's pretty great. Yes, five little lion. I like it. <laughs> so um, my next question is going to be on you guys. Really, how communicative does the team plan on being when presenting changes to the you know to the to the community about the game or garnering feedback from the community? And in my time of of, of playing MMOs. I've come across some great initiatives where you know developers and publishers are communicating with their community. Hey, this is what we want to do. What do you think about it? We can make some changes if you don't like it. And then I've been on the other the other side of that spectrum where the game developer is like, "This is what you're getting. Pick it up and love it because we're not changing it." <laughs> wow. So, you know, it, I've seen both spectrums of that. Where do you guys see yourself in in, in that in that mix there? So, I mean, <clears throat> the most important aspect of, of gaming for me in my life has always been the community. And um, I wanted to, to take that into the development end of things when it comes to MMORPGs because I personally really haven't experienced the super communicative um, aspect that you have with some games. You know, I've really only ever been on the other side of that spectrum where as a gamer I didn't get any communication and they were just saying, you know, suck it up and, and enjoy the RNG boxes. Um, so, <laughs> exactly, <sorry. laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, for me, going into Ashes of Creation, it's always been at the forefront of what we are doing to make sure that we are as communicative as possible with our community. You know, I'm on Discord, our, our rest of our team is on Discord, we're on Reddit, we're on our forums, you know, we're, we're engaging with the community on not just a developer with, uh, you know, player interaction, but kind of like, hey, we're all a part of this MMORPG family. You know, our genre isn't a giant genre. We need to stick together so that what we're able to produce as an industry is going to be something that reflects the will, the desires of our players. Absolutely. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge, right? There's a reason why a lot of developers don't do that, because it takes work. Um, yeah. You know, and, and we're willing to put in that work and to make sure that those those communication pathways are, are back and forth, right? And you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, we want the health of the game to be to be what drives us. So right. um, 
that's having that feedback is super critical to making that kind of thing happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, great answer. And I appreciate it. You know, um, what what will the content release tempo be once the game is launched? How often will we see updates to the game on both a minor scale and, and a major scale? Again, I've been on both sides of the spectrum where, you know, there's, you know, the, the MMO developer is constantly releasing content every three months. And that's kind of what we're accustomed to if we're lucky. But I've also been on the, you know, again, uh, enjoy the RNG boxes. How, where, where do you guys see yourself falling <laughs> in, in terms of how often are we can we expect to get new shiny stuff? I think the answer to that question is uh, very often. I mean, first of all, being a subscription model allows us that ability to constantly be producing content. And when that is coupled with our node system and how we can release certain content, through the node system, you're going to be seeing often there being, um, you know, developer updates and new chapters and new quest lines and storylines and, you know, a lot of stuff that that relates to, you know, what is possible in this world based on player decision. And then we're just adding to that. You know, we're constantly adding to that. Yeah, um, I, I like these are these are really cloudy numbers, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what we're going to do is going to depend on what the game is like at launch. Um, but I know right now in my head, we're planning on, on it, at the very least, uh, quarterly, quarterly big releases big of, of stuff yeah. um, and probably minor ones in between that. Um, but again, like until we get to that point, it's going to be hard to really nail down exactly how often those will come. But mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll be at least quarterly um, and maybe faster than and that. And that's for the major ones, right. like every three months for the major ones. You know, there could be smaller ones that come out, you know, every month even right. maybe, like new quest lines, stuff like mm -hmm. that. It just depends. Our node system is really versatile in that regard. Yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense. So now I'm going to hit you for a bit of a dinger here, guys. I've been easy on you. Uh -oh. and now I got to get a uh -oh. little, you uh -oh. know, got to do a little something right. here. So. <laughs> going to switch gears a little bit and ask the question, why PvP in Ashes of Creation? What benefits outside of the no associated benefits are there from PvPing in the game? Why, why bother? Why, why PvP in Ashes of Creation? Well, you know, the, the, the primary goal or central tenet in Ashes of Creation is you as the player, you as the community, are, are here on this world to develop, to rebuild, repopulate, you know, explore, and bring civilization back to this forgotten world. Um, and <clears throat> PV, that's the PvE aspect of it. The PvP um, mechanic is necessary to help catalyze change because our node system works in a way that allows doors to be open for, for certain content. And, and when you open a door, you know, you leave a door behind sometimes. And we want PVP to allow you to go back and open up that door you left behind potentially to explore that content that was locked off by development of a certain node. So, you know, <clears throat> PVP for us is, is an aspect that is necessary when it comes to bringing meaning to the game's development and in, in, inside the storyline itself, um, allowing players to, to work together against not just an AI, but also against your fellow player if they have different, different objectives, different goals, different interests. And you know, for me in the past playing MMORPGs, um, oftentimes PvP was done in a way that really didn't bring a lot of meaning to the game. It was really just something that was available and, and you know, players could, could exercise their political intrigue through PvP. But, but here in Ashes of Creation, um, PvP inflicts meaningful change throughout the world. Um, yeah, uh, change is, is basically the, the big word right there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our node system really kind of almost depends on it where mm -hmm. if we let it go and there was no way to destroy these things, then they would just grow out and then that would be it. That would be the game. Um, we want people to be able to tear things down as much as we want them to build them up. Um, so that's kind of the engine that keeps things going. Right, and it keeps it fresh. It mm -hmm. keeps it new. You know, it, 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 it is that, that phoenix of rebirth mm -hmm. that comes out of the ashes of what PvP can right. bring. You know? exactly. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, absolutely. <laughs> now, um, I know that uh, there's going to be, uh, I know you mentioned in a previous segment that there's going to be some form of you know, battleground or arena. Um, are there are there any plans? Well, can you elaborate on on that? You know, I we I I love the notion of this node centric MMOs. You know, with 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 the PVP surrounding it. 
what about that that arena or that <coughs> battleground PvP? Can you elaborate a little bit on what we can expect from there? Are there any rewards for participating in that PvP that's outside of the you know, uh, the, the influence of the nodes? Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, we, we are intending to have battlegrounds. Um, we do intend to have arenas. Uh, we intend to have ladders and participation that reflects your, your skill and abilities within those specific systems. Um, <clears throat> we, we definitely are going to have those in Ashes of Creation. In addition to that, um, you know, we have open world battlegrounds that can, can be organic in the sense that our, our caravan is a necessary tool, a mechanic that transits goods between regional marketplaces and systems, localities that, that depend on resources being brought there, which is dependent upon the players to do that. And, and these caravans, you know, bring with them a static PvP zone that's based off of proximity. And if there are players within that area, they're going to be queued with a user interface that says, do you want to participate to attack, defend, or ignore this caravan? And and players get to participate in this kind of moving dynamic battleground that exists out in the open world which which has a lot of you know risk versus reward mechanics for players to either um, succeed in transiting those goods or, or be taken by these bandits whose interests are to take those goods mm -hmm. um, we have castle systems that reflect uh, you know con exert control over the world around it and the nodes that exist within the regions but can can be a source of, of, of additional protection for the transit of those goods or for the protection of those nodes or could not you know um, we have a lot of systems in place both open world and in the arena yeah yeah I mean sometimes with <laughs> arenas it's just like you want to break from the world and you want to exactly. go out and do something fun for a short period of time mm -hmm. um, so we want people to have that option um, and to be able to just like hey I'm gonna take a break from the world for a second and 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 kill some fools right right, <laughs> right, right. I know people have that competitive edge we want to enable them to you know live right. that out and be competitive so. yeah now can a can a pirate or player killer flourish in this game or is he limited by the penalties that he has you know can, so can, you I mean, know can a, can a can a bad yeah. guy can a bad guy make it in this game if he wants to well i think to a degree i mean we we want to incentivize um you know meaningful conflict meaningful pvp obviously we don't want it to become a gank box or a murder box, which is why we've instituted our open world flagging system, which kind of um, deters just outright PKing of non-combatants. I mean, if you're running around <clears throat> and uh, you see other players and, and you want to just murder them, you know, we don't want to incentivize that. And, and our flagging system, get, you know, gives you corruption if you do kill non-combatants. And, and corruption is not a good thing. <laughs> I right, mean, no. it's, it's not <laughs> beneficial for you. Um, and, and in addition to that, you know, um, th that corruption decreases your effectiveness when it comes to combat. So you just can't go down a PKing spree uh, and, cons and expect to be effective after a period of time. Right, like if your goal is just to make another player's day worse, right, right there's, there's probably not a game there for you. Yeah. Um, if you're there to actually accomplish something, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a good reason to do it, and there's going to be plenty of, of opportunities for you to succeed. So it, it really depends on what your motivation is and what you're trying to gain. Um, uh, and yeah. Yeah, and it's not going to be a, a scenario in which, like, you know, I've, I've seen definitely people discussing. Um, our PvP flagging system and saying, well, hey, you know, people are just going to kill me anyways. You know, this corruption doesn't sound like a significant enough deterrence and, and uh, you know, I'm going to get spawn camped or something. Uh, I assure you, in our flagging system, that's not possible. Somebody's not going to be spawn camped. Um, you know, the corruption system will accrue enough penalties after a short period of time that that person's effectiveness in PvP is not going to be capable of allowing them to sit there and spawn camp you. In addition, you know, we have a bounty hunter system as well that's going to take um, people who do accrue that corruption, uh, they're going to be a target for people that want to go out there and and <laughs> take out these take out these murderers. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, you know, um, to the lesser degree of mm -hmm. the, away from the gate box, you know, when Stephen referenced caravans, you know, if your identity is that you want to go and you just only want to attack them with mm -hmm. the open PvP zone, you could totally do yes. that. Yes, you know? and there's a meaning behind that. Right, and there's a motivation, there's a meaning, there's a reward, you know, there's an identity associated with that act. You know, these are the types of things that we want to um, incentivize. And, and it's the same thing, I mean, you know, everything, it, 
reverts back to a risk and reward. Right. I mean, oftentimes, if your reward carries no risk, then it has no meaning to you. There's no satisfaction in having achieved something. So we, we want to make sure that w whether it comes to the transit of goods or it comes to the development of civilization or it comes to the keeping of a whole uh, of, a, of a castle, you know, there is significant risk that's applied to those based on the activities of your opponents in the world that, it, that makes it satisfying for you to hold that keep or to defend that city or to earn your reward for transiting that mithril or iron or whatever. Um, you know, th that balance is necessary and you have to make sure that there is a significant realm of, of, of playground for you in the PVE aspect of things and the crafting aspect of things and the trading aspect of things so that you bring both meaning to that reward and you also give meaning to those who just want to tear stuff down. I mean, because those people exist. Absolutely. And, 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 we, and, and they're a healthy dynamic when it comes to creating a, a, a world that rewards both sides. Yeah. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Now I gotta ask this question, Steve. I know I know you can relate a little bit. Is there <laughs> is there any RNG when upgrading gear? Can your gear be broken or downgraded when we're talking about upgrading or doing anything at <coughs> all with crafting here? So crafting is going to be recipe based and it is not going to involve RNG when it comes to crafting up. No, it will not involve RNG. It will involve getting out in the world and 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 getting rare items and and killing monsters and and bosses epic bosses that are going to create epic gear and it's going to come down to potentially even taking that epic gear and and deconstructing it to learn how it works so that you can produce it in the future as a master crafter it's going to come down between um, uh, working together with different paths of the artisan class whether you're a processor a gatherer or an item creator we're not going to see rng in our crafting system there may May be some elements of RNG when it comes to you know over enchanting beyond what an item is but you'll be able to determine what that item is going to be when you're crafting it uh, based on the recipes that you're using and the materials that you found and the resources that you've gathered uh, but if you want to take that extra step and risk something when it comes to you know making your sword of you know Jeffrey, your sword of Jeffrey. <laughs> the sword of Jeff. <laughs> you know, if you want to make it a plus ten sword, that's a different story. You know, obviously there's going to be some some potential RNG to that. And then in addition, you know, there's drop table RNGs that are gonna obviously exist in the of game course. as well for like what you kill and things. But Okay. Yeah. Not when it comes not not a game that should not be spoken. Uh, no, you will not see that degree of RNG. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, we're we're really trying to focus on making crafting fun. Um, making crafting um, something that everybody can like work together towards mm -hmm. um, and that there's a game there, right? That it's not just I'm sitting at a UI window all day long right. and that's all I do, right? We want it to be a fun, engaging part of your gameplay. Yeah. Um, you know. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, my next question is about mounts. Uh, I don't know if this has been asked before, but you know, okay. is there going to be mounted, mount specific combat and if so or if not, can mounts be killed by the other players? <clears throat> so mounts could be, yes, killed by other players. There will be um, some mount-specific abilities that, that uh, will be had by particular mounts, and those abilities could pertain to some combat scenarios. But uh, specifically, if you're asking, like, can I use my you know, ranger abilities while atop a mount? We're not gonna be doing that. No, you won't be able to, to participate with your class skills while mounted. Um, it's just going to be, it's gonna be limited uh, to what the mount specifically is capable of doing. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how will smaller guilds be able to compete with larger guilds? I, I understand that there's an alliance system that's gonna be in place, but are there any integrated systems from the game standpoint to prevent one mega blob from ruling everything, you know, or, or, right. or having multiple guilds grief one smaller guild? Is there anything in place for that? So absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> when designing Ashes of Creation, you know, it was very important for us to make sure that we were able to focus on certain systems that applied to smaller groups, smaller organizations, and they had a place within those systems, and then also having the, the application of larger guilds and larger groups. Um, there's a lot of different things that smaller groups can do better than larger groups, and we wanted to make sure that we, we focus, focused on... <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, focused on those systems when it comes to 
sieges, there will be roles for smaller groups to play. When it comes to um, um, developing certain structures within a node, smaller groups will have an advantage of, uh, you know, and, and another thing that's a huge aspect of, of probably something you and I both, Doc, have experienced in the past is with games that, that really e emphasize Zerg play, you know, one of the primary components is the ability of that Zerg to form in a very short period of time and port immediately to some location that needs their their attention, right? right. I mean, that's that's part of what Zerg play is. Yeah. And I think in our game, with with removing that fast travel mechanic and including, um, um, you know, meaningful travel that takes time to reach certain places, you're not going to see as much of a development of that Zerg play. If a caravan is moving out from a city and a large guild doesn't catch wind of it until it begins moving, they likely will not have the time to organize, form, and reach that point uh, by the time that caravan reaches its location. Uh, and I think that's a big aspect of, of you know cutting back the potential for Zergs to control things in the game. We really want strategy to be a part of the, the guild um, lexicon, right? Um, we want guilds to have to plan and to have to have people in the right place at the right time in order to to like exert their influence on the world. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a big part of it. Um, and having alliances with smaller guilds, allowing them to you know get into places that a bigger guild might not necessarily be there. Right. Um, you know, guilds that call their home in one town versus another town is going to really kind of affect how the world works. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's there's definitely going to be a lot of small parts. We were talking earlier about guild um, leveling. Yeah, about how guild levels may. Um, Actually, maybe we don't talk about that. No. Well, we, can, okay. we, can, we can give a little overview. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> Go for we can give, it. Okay, so so obviously, um, whoops, did we lose the stream? Are we good? I can't see. Oh, okay, sorry. <clears throat> so, um, you know, obviously everything we're saying is, is uh, brought into the light of, you know, we have alphas and we have betas where we're going to test some of these philosophies, okay? And, and part of... Part of um, that testing is obviously going to be getting the community's feedback on certain systems and mechanics. I mean, we um, one of the things we're talking about is when it comes to guild progression specifically and what skills are available during the guild progression. <clears throat> we have a very intricate uh, guild system that involves different levels and different progression aspects and questing uh, specific guild questing. And and as you're advancing that guild in in its progression, you have the ability to either expand or focus in on a smaller guild. So let's say, for example, you're a group of, of 20 people and you want to level your guild, but you're not interested in expanding it to you know, 100 people or 150 people because you really just want to stay that tight-knit group. Right. <clears throat> well, if you're going to forego the additional membership slots, you'll have the ability to focus in on some stronger um, um, skills or some more honed uh, 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 skill specific skills that are available to your group of 20 that the larger guild who chose to go the route of more membership slots doesn't have access to. Wow. Um, and you know I think that that's a good way to balance you know how smaller guilds can interact with larger guilds in the <laughs> in the game. <laughs> I, just, I look up yeah, yeah. I see, I see that elephant just running yeah. across the screen. And we've also talked about uh, fortresses being having like right. scaling for oh, size, yeah, you know, having smaller size yes. guilds being able to siege fortresses. Um, oh. oh, we did we it! We just reached 1.5 million! Congratulations! And gentlemen. Congratulations right. to you guys! Yes. Thank yes. you so Thank much! You awesome. Very wow. cool. That's a huge milestone for us. Oh, that yeah. is awesome. So that what comes with that is our uh, enhanced uh, ocean yes. content. Yes, yeah. so that's going to be coming. That's uh, pretty exciting. Ship warfare mm -hmm. and um, underground or underwater We've got to get an update on that just to show yeah. a little bit, mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but no, what Peter was saying, I'm sorry, about um, world events and, and world specific locations like uh, guild halls, you know, fighting mm -hmm. over guild halls. We have mechanics that are uh, geared towards smaller guilds and larger guilds and, and a place for those, those two separate identities. Absolutely. That sounds fantastic. I, I, oh, that just tickles me pink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of guilds, I mean, in, you know, I, I've played MMOs where, you know, you can, you can thrive as a solo player. I've played MMOs where you know you 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 really you really need to be in a guild. Where does Ashes of Creation fit into that? Can a solo player thrive with the mechanics of the game, or do you really want to be in a guild to experience the most of what Ashes of Creation has to offer? Excuse me. 
You know, I we, th- go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, we, we always focus on the micro and the macro um, when it comes to our design. Um, we want to make sure that as a solo player, we realize there are solo players out there. Um, and they should have a role, right? It doesn't mean that they don't necessarily need to not, they, they don't have to work with other people. That's that's always going to be part of it. Right. Um, but, but our content isn't locked behind guilds. Right, that's right. absolutely true. And I think, I think it's important to note that by merely joining an MMORPG, you are becoming a part of a community already. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I mean, yes, you, you can be a solo player, but simply playing an MMORPG makes you a part of the community in some degree. And I think there's, as Jeff was saying, micro macro, there's a lot of macro systems that, that include solo players in some sense of community within the game, whether right. it be developing a node that you're a citizen of, or you know, working on certain um, um, buildings and getting those buildings up and running in those nodes, or participating in the raids, uh, in the dungeons, and building your freehold. Those systems, those mechanics, while not, necess- while not needing you to be a part of a guild, does have you a part of a community. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's why it's possible to both be a solo player or a guild player in our game, because ultimately, at the end of the day, you are part of a community no matter what. Right. And I think we approach it trying to understand and, you know, very cognizant of the fact that motivations differ, and there's a wide mm-hmm. spectrum of motivations, mm-hmm. and that the solo player, let's say that they're going out and just either today they decide to do only quests and that's all they're going to do today. Mm-hmm. By doing that, they are contributing to the area they're in, yes. you know, they're affecting my play experience, right. Jeff, Steve's. You know, we wanted th- that's the whole reason for the node system is that everyone gets a contribution, you know, into the pool, right, so mm-hmm. to speak. So we want everyone having some type of feedback, no matter what your motivation. Right. That's true. Makes sense. Good point. So speaking of speaking of guilds, I, I, I heard the tingling of guild skills and, and how guild <laughs> leaders are gonna be able to, you know, specialize their guilds. What tool will guild leaders have to bring the guild together, there you know, the, um, are there going to be any guild missions or guild specific activities oh, yeah. that a guild leader can initiate or an officer can initiate to get the guild rolling, or is it all about just collectively doing whatever individuals are doing at the time? There's going to be a lot of tools to guild leaders and, and Steven's a big guild guy. So <laughs> yes, that, that's, I know. I'm a, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some wants and desires. I'd say that. <laughs> I am definitely a big guild guy, but but don't don't get that wrong. If you're a solo player, there's a lot of. I mean, there's an equilibrium there between oh, yeah, the I didn't two. Yeah, that. no, I know. <laughs> but no, I am a, I am a big guild guy, and and there's going to be, I mean, gosh, I don't even this. It's gonna knock your socks off, Doc. I'm telling you right now, the amount of guild activity in this game, from a, from a tool standpoint, from from a leadership standpoint, from a, a delegation standpoint, um, from activities and quest lines and storylines and and development and skills and passives that are available to the guild halls and the castles and the and the node political systems. I mean, there is just so much that these these communities within the game. Can partake in, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, it's. I think it's going to be one of a kind. Yeah, the tool set that that guild leaders are going to have is going to be pretty robust. Um, uh, we're going all out on it, so so guild leaders should 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 have plenty of of good ways of recruiting, good ways of you know managing and maintaining their guild, uh, good ways of communicating to their guild and getting motivating that guild and getting that guild to an actionable place. That's amazing. That is amazing. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. If Steve said it's going to be good, then it's going to be good, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure how much time we have left, um, but... Uh, I think you got some time. Okay, all right. Maybe awesome. five, ten more minutes? Yeah, five, ten more minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, going back a little bit to, uh, to PvP, in your opinion, from where you sit, can someone play the game and live purely in the PvP of Ashes of Creation. Can I log in and get a good solid let me let me be nice here, you know, four to five hours of just raw PvP content in Ashes of Creation? Um that's a tough question. That's I, a really hard question. I don't I don't um, my a lot of it depends on the community right, and what it's I, doing. I, I would say my, my first inclination as an answer to that would be purely no. I think that, that that you're going to naturally, if you're playing the game, come across aspects that are going to to involve you with the environment 
um, and uh, you know, going out there and, and either questing for certain things, uh, you know, killing certain monsters, even you know, interacting with the economy if you need gear, um, stuff like that. Um, but a large predominant portion could be reflected of, you know, the arena system and, uh, you know, battlegrounds and being abandoned. And yes, there would be a large portion of that that's possible, uh, obviously. But it just, it just really depends on what that server is doing, right? right? Like, right. like, I imagine that there are going to be servers that are pretty PvP heavy and there's always something crazy going on. And I imagine quieter servers where people kind of keep to themselves. So it really just depends on what the community is doing and, and what they decide to do with their day. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of avenues to PvP yeah. in our game, right? right? So I think it really depends on, <clears throat> with that question, what specifically like you're wanting to do on that day. You know, there's so many avenues to get to your end point of the broad stroke mm -hmm. PvP, right. right? That I, you know, there's so much that I think you can just approach that from that really, I don't know the hours down to the minute. No, of course. Right? I just, I I just get, I just but get, I know there's a lot that you can do. I just get, get hesitant there. when I hear the word purely. I mean, I, I don't right. want to make an emphatic statement that Absolutely. yes, there is a, you can purely do it this way. You know, right. Obviously, there's going to be some some give and take between your time to advance and progress in the game that, that might require certain things you know, that are PvE reflective. Of course. Um, but um, there's going to be a large possibility of PvP-oriented players having a lot of PvP-oriented things to do. And the same is true on the PvE side. Like, if, if you're a PvE player who doesn't want to participate in PvP all the time or really wants to avoid PvP to a large degree, there's going to be many things that are possible for you to do in the game that reflect only a PvE experience. Um, you know, we're not, we're not forcing players to do one or the other. There is a healthy balance in the game that's going to reflect those two systems. Um, and they both have to have a lot of, of tender love and care when developing, <laughs> that, right? But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I would stay away from words like purely, just makes because, sense. you know, I can't, I can't predict. Yeah, that. it's really hard to predict. <laughs> no, absolutely, it makes sense, it makes sense. Now, speaking of, speaking of servers, I, I heard servers, mm -hmm. how, yes. how do the yes. servers get broken down? Are there gonna be multiple channels per server where you can switch kind of like an MMO that's currently in existence now? Or is it if you're on the server, you're on the server, I can find you wherever you are? It's gonna be the latter. If you're on the server, you're on the server. He's talking about servers with separate channels. Right. We're having separate servers. Right, um, right. And uh, yeah. those servers will have their own population. Yeah, uh, for, the, for the node system, we really need a, a, a system like that. Um, because thanks. thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, we need a system like that because of how different each world is going to be. Um, you know, based on how nodes evolve and things evolve, there may be things unlocked on one server that aren't unlocked on another server. Right. Um, and so, so it's pretty <clears throat> necessary that the populations uh, remain where they started. And that's and that's one of the most defining aspects of what sets Ashes of Creation apart from what's been done in the industry for the past you know, 17 years, mm -hmm. 18 years, whatever. Um, it, is, it is the fact that each server will tell that different story. Right. You know, our, our system is designed so that content is, is chosen by the players. It's like that, I mean, when I was a kid, I really loved the Goosebump series. <laughs> Did you ever read Goosebumps? I loved Goosebumps, okay? All right. And um, there was a version of the Goosebumps book that was called uh, Choose Your Own Adventure. And it, I mean, it wasn't a Goosebumps specific thing, but it was, uh, it was my favorite book to read because at the bottom of the page, you'd have a choice. Do you, you know, open the door on the right or do you walk down the hallway on your left? And if you open the door on your right, you turn to page 67 and right. you know, yeah, something yeah, yeah. happens, right. obviously. So like, it was that kind of philosophy of choosing your own adventure that I had never seen done before in an MMORPG and it just made sense, like why is this not the case? I mean, all the technological tools are there from a design element to get this thing done this way and no one just has, has done that. They've, they've played with it a little right. bit, but from, from a, a purely you know, server architecture standpoint, from a, from a design pillar, it has never been done before and I thought it was the, the coolest idea um, for a, a population as close-knit as the MMORPG community is to have that agency over the direction of a narrative in the server. And I think it's going to be really cool when you see those servers have different narratives. Right. 
you know. Yeah, I think it's gonna be cool for players, right? Because one thing that happens on one server might not happen on another server, and people can so, talk about that, right? right? Like, like there's, there's, like we talk about player story all the time, and player story is where that real story happens. Mm. When, when we talk about MMOs and we talk about our experiences, it's those stories that that we love to tell. So Always. we want, we want as many opportunities for that kind of storytelling to happen um, uh, across as many places Absolutely. as we can. Absolutely. Yeah, I think like every every time I would speak with you know anybody old guildmate guildmates who maybe come into my Teamspeak server or whatever after 4 years of not coming in when we begin to rehash stories of the past, it's always about, man, do you remember that one time outside this city when we had that fight that lasted four straight hours and like, yeah, I was rezzing you and you like lost an entire level right. or something. Right. It's like, those are the stories that, that really stick with you as a gamer that you can't get from just doing other social activities like, you know, watching TV. And a story time. like that changes the server, know, right? Like that's the cool entirely. part about it, right? Like yeah. there's actual consequences to Absolutely. it. Rather than just being a story we're telling each other. Yeah. And that's what we really wanted to do. We wanted to give the tools for players to do that over and over again, to yeah. have those server defining moments, to have those stories that are going to stick with them, you know, years down the road that they can remember, man, that was a really fun night and yeah. it stuck with me, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, I love it. I love it. I hate the channel system. So that answer couldn't have gone any better for me. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. So, um, uh, uh, next question would be, um, We'll this will probably have to be the last question. Last question. Yes. Okay, last question okay. of the night. So choose wisely. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Well, you guys have hit me good, so... <laughs> will, <laughs> will there be an auto-run pathing system in the game? Can you, an mm, auto-run pathing auto system. Run. So is that like... <laughs> you can, I don't know about pathing system, but you could... You could potentially press like the numlock key and your character just. Oh, runs. I mean, right. do you mean like you, a personal character directed due to a button press or something? Like I choose a waypoint and I run to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Ooh, not. Probably not. No, probably I would not. say. What? <laughs> yeah, you basically. Yeah. Ha right. we might have some fast travel options that are similar to that. Oh, you mean between like right, right, and right stuff? point to point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could have fast. <laughs> you could have faster travel, right? Not fast travel. Right. You get a faster travel where you summon a mount or something from the gate of one node, and you're like, hey, I want to go to the node over here. And it's just like, all right, so you begin moving along the road potentially yeah. with that mount. Um, maybe. Okay. I don't know. That's a good question. We don't have an answer totally. I got you, baby! <laughs> yeah, that's the last one. Should have cut you well off. Done. <laughs> uh, save the best for last. Save the best for last. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Epic. Well, hey, Doc got game. It was a pleasure for us to have you. Yeah, everybody. that was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, I am thank a you. huge fan of your of your stream. I love your passion you. when it comes to MMORPGs, and I was honored to have you here with yeah, us today, absolutely. asking Thanks us going, some man. cool questions. No, thank you guys. Thank you so much for having me, and I can't wait to plunk down some money on what's going to be an amazing MMO. Thank you for giving us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate thank it, man. Thank you so much. We appreciate for the it. Later, buddy. All right, take care, guys. All right. I love Doc Got Game. Yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. He's a, he's a cool guy. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a great guy, and he has a he has a really strong passion for the community. And I think yeah. that uh, I love I love his take on <clears throat> the industry and just the genre in general. Yeah, totally agree. Um, we had some questions we that we didn't get to last time. Sorry, million everyone. guys. Hey, yes. one point five. Awesome. That is so cool. Amazing support. Amazing community. Uh, we really cannot express enough our heartfelt gratitude for all the support that you guys have shown us. And, and it means so much to us to just look out in the sea of the MMORPG genre and see all these people coming out saying, hey, you're onto something. This, yes. is, this is, you guys are going the right direction. <laughs> Feels good, man. Feels it good. does feel good. So we didn't get to some questions last time. What uh, questions do we have, Peter? All do we right. Have water over there? Uh, we do. Um, I have so much water. Thank you. I love water. Okay. The first one comes from... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to drink it out of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man. The first one comes from Big One Chris. Will races affect your classes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> races will affect your classes. So... So we've talked about the secondary system right. uh, for classes, how you pick a primary class and a secondary class. Uh, race is going to function similarly to that. 
Yeah, so like you'll have, <clears throat> you know, racial augments that are that are capable of being applied to active skills. Mm -hmm. and, and those augments are going to be a, a reflection of the flavor of that specific race. Uh, in addition, uh, races will have differing degrees of stats. And, and our game um, in our class system relies on certain stats uh, to achieve uh, different metrics in the game when it comes to you know damage, defense, and landing rates, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, we wanted race to, to be uh, an identity, um, mm -hmm. and, and that's part of that system, right? We don't want it just to be a skin. We want it to actually mean something when it comes yes. to the actual gameplay. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, it will. It and it will doesn't mean that class. anything is race locked. There's, right. You know, right. All That's the classes important. are playable yeah. through all races. So you know, and there could you know potentially there can be some metas for certain classes with some races. But you know, there's a high customization. So like, there's a lot of different focuses that each class can have. Right. There's a lot of space. Right. There's a lot of space there. Okay. This next one is by Muino. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing Muino. your name. What kinds of benefits will religion give players, and will players be able to practice multiple religions? So players will not be able to practice multiple religions at the same time. You will focus on your religious class and, and um, progressing down that class. And if you want to switch religions, there may be a mechanic for that, right. obviously. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. But you'll probably yeah. lose progression in the religion that you come from. Right. Um, <clears throat> and, and there's going to be some type of hierarchical structure to the religion class that involves the community as a whole uh, and people's progressions in that religion and then that religion's progression in the development of the world as well whether or not certain temples are built in right. different nodes mm -hmm. are going to progress that religion and and each religion will also have um, if it's progressed far enough potentially augments that become religious specific augments as well um, you know we're still working on that so yeah but we, uh, to make a long story short, we want religion to be a, a pretty big motivator in the game. Um, it's, it's a big part of the lore, and we want that reflected in the mechanics, too. Mm -hmm. This guy's name. All right. <laughs> um, Anamnesis007. Anamnesis. Um, sorry, I'm sure I butchered that, so my apologies. How easy will it be to get to other portals in starting zones so that you can play with your friends early on? How easy will it be? Uh, or how much time will it take? Yeah, because I mean, it could be relatively easy, but just take a good amount of time. <laughs> right. So I think it's like a problem that we, un that we it's a, it's an issue that we understand is there, right? And I uh -huh. think that we're, we want fast travel to not be an easy method of something happening. We want travel to matter, and I right. think that's it's you know we <coughs> want that to be a theme in our game. I, th I think another thing is is you know, and we haven't fully discussed this. Um, so I think we're deciding that it could be possible for you to choose your starting portal. Right, right, right. And you don't have to be locked behind um, what your race is. You can choose your race and then choose your, your divine portal as well. Right, and, and that probably would, would be, be more along the lines of where we want to go with that right. mm -hmm. rather than um, making it easy to go from one portal to another yeah. um, because it is, it is, they are going to be pretty far apart and mm -hmm. um, the distances are pretty considerable, so. Right. And the world is pretty large. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Okay, next one is by Sandal. Mm. Um, like oh, nice name. name. All right, awesome great name. name. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, okay. thank you. There you go. Appreciate it. Um, will Ashes have a character client that will allow players to create and customize their characters and test their PCs before the game launches? Um, so, uh, let's see, That's they want a separate client for their character? Early right. access client to the Almost character like customization. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's something we would very much like to do. Yes. Um, it's not something we can promise at this point. Um, we're going to be way more focused on getting the game done. Right. Um, if we can break that out into a client pretty easily and you know have enough cycles for that in our, in our design, um, we will do that. It's something we want to do. Um, but again, it's going to really depend on where we are at that point. I, I we want to. It's a goal, yeah. but yeah, um, I, I feel it's a like, soft goal. I feel like it's a very achievable goal. Yeah. You know, but we just don't want to say something and not hold true to it. So, uh, I think it's achievable, and we'll probably have that because <clears throat> it's a really cool aspect to be able to like sit and play with your character customization suite. Oh yeah, no doubt. Down no doubt. Like, I mean, save it and like ready to go with it and that kind of stuff. I think it's, I think it's cool. It's a great idea. Okay, the next one is by Zoot101. Will players be able to have optional surnames for their characters? Yes. Yeah. 
Easy one. Next question. <laughs> Why did I even put down my phone? All right. <laughs> um, Double DZ99. Can we expand on the character customization and emoji packs available in the Kickstarter? So, like, can we talk about them? Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. no, totally. Want to talk about Want to talk about them? You can talk about them. Yeah, I'll talk about them. Peter. Sure. So, for example, in the character customization, we're talking about things that are like uh, hairstyles or tattoos or uh, mm -hmm. things like scars, you know, yeah. things right. that involve in your actual character creation portion. Um, yeah. That would go into that type of pack. For and emojis, you could talk about, you know, let's say you're an elf. You could buy the elf emoji pack, so mm -hmm. now it looks like elves are, you know, smiling, right? It's right. Like that type of stuff. Yeah, I think um, it's just an additional flair right. to, like, yeah. you know, your, your either chat or your character representation. I mean, <clears throat> we're going to have a wide array of character customization and, like, eye colors and, you know, skin colors and hair colors and hairstyles mm -hmm. and, like, eyebrow things and chin, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> eyebrow there's, things. There's going <laughs> <there's laughs> to be a lot of stuff that's available just out of the box. Right. And then the additional stuff from the character customization packages are going to be, like, you know, this, what kind of scars you can have, like, different types of scars, like mm -hmm. you said, or, you know, different hairstyles or different eyebrow things or you know whatever right. <laughs> eyebrow things <laughs> who knows but what the idea are. there's definitely to be robust up right. front Absolutely. and you know have additional options yes yeah like you see on the kickstarter you're not um, going to have like one face to choose from and like <laughs> right right right, right. <laughs> it's right. like you Five better faces you better buy this size. package yeah, or you no, only right. get to be one person there's gonna be no, plenty there's gonna of be options a whole stuff that you can choose from without having any of the additional packages right. Okay, so Taco Man 2014. All right. Will Ashes have epic quest lines such as in EverQuest? Okay, so in EverQuest, there were these um, really amazing class defining items that you could go on epic quests where these quests would take sometimes months at a time to complete. Um, we're not going to have a system that's exactly that, um, but there will be, um, there will be epic quest right yes. not not in the eq sense right but in the like oh my god that's in the, epic in the ashes um, sense in the in the ashes sense yeah. um you know they probably won't be for specific items right mm -hmm. uh they'll be more for you know maybe a god forge hidden somewhere or right. maybe you know it'll help you to do things in the world um and to unlock extra content, mm -hmm. but not necessarily maybe to find the best, most class-defining <coughs> sword. It might help you make <coughs> the best, most class-defining sword, but it won't be an end in and of itself. Right, that's true, yeah. But I think that the main tenet there is like, hey, this is something that took a lot of time on right. behalf of the player or players. And, and has and a lot of secrets great, and a lot of things yes, to exactly. figure out and a lot of yes. depth to it. We're definitely going and down And it has that a road. strong reward too right. for that mm -hmm. time. Yes, yeah. there is absolutely going to be those epic legendary quests, mm -hmm. just not in the same way. Right. Okay, uh, Nikos86, will players be able to easily swap between builds? So at the moment, you know, we've discussed and are very likely to have the ability for players to swap between their secondary classes. And we said a little earlier, even between their like religious stuff, right? And, you know, that could that could reach out a little bit further potentially. We're going to be play testing that to a degree when right. Alpha comes around, obviously. Um, <laughs> but I think right now, on the primary class aspect of things, we haven't decided on whether or not that swapping is going to be. Yeah, we keep attacked. going back and forth. There's a lot of reasons to and a lot of reasons against. So mm -hmm. um, it's something it's something we're still playing with. Um, yeah. And you know, when we get to a decision on that, we'll definitely let you guys know. Yeah. Okay, um... But to, to, to fix that a little bit, um, for the build that you've built for your character, right, that will probably be fairly easily changed. Whether your class can change oh, is a different question. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. What about the uh, build for water? Is there any more water? There's more water. <laughs> nice. I'm sorry, my, my, I get dry, my mouth get dry. I don't want to cough on the street. It's like the endless water thing. Oh, it's there. wonderful. I can't believe you <laughs> I love it. Uh, this one doesn't have a name, but what are the available loot distribution mechanics? So, available like, loot master loot, need greed, oh. that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's, there's yes. the answer to that is yes. Right, basically all of them. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah like, I mean, uh, we're going to go probably pretty standard with that. Um, it's a system that works, and it works well. Right. Um, so no need to reinvent the wheel on that. Um, mm -hmm. there, there may be specific things like events and how Did we... Did you see that new Goodyear wheel that's like perfectly circular? I did not see that. They're reinventing the wheel, so maybe we should on loot mechanics. Well, maybe. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm just kidding. 
No, yeah, pretty standard. Pretty standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to be too. That's that's all the questions for Reddit. Oh, oh all right. right. Well, how about what what time is it? Do we have any more time? We've got it's three five two. Three oh, five so we got two. eight more minutes. Let's field some questions from the Twitch chat. Oh God, here we go. Uh, we're doing it live. <laughs> Do it live! <laughs> Do it live! Throw the table over. No. Don't throw the table at me. Okay. We're well, gonna throw then it they'll you. see what's in the briefcase. Oh, we can't, can't show it. that. We gotta right. take Close that thing. Oh, Stop sorry. Messing with I, it. I didn't know it was open. I was getting stuff out of it. I think they can see what's inside it no, on the reflection can't. on my screen. Nope. Yeah, it's locked. The football's um, locked. The robot will... Um, oh gosh, it keeps moving. Will resources be replenished? i.e. if you mine something, will it come back at a later point? Or will you be able to like deforest an area? So I think the answer to that is a combination of, of both answers. It's it's like when, right? It's right. when will that happen? Yes. It's not it's not going to be like the the little rock that you've been hitting for the last five seconds. Right. It disappears no. and then another rock appears forty five minutes later, right? That's not gonna be how the, the crafting system works. It'll be you know, It'll be um, more like vein oriented, where you right. discover a vein of ore you right. know, instead of a single rock that goes away. And that vein of ore has so much of a supply. Right. And when that supply is diminished, that vein is gone. And who knows for how long. Right. Like, um, and it could reappear halfway across the world. It could come next season back to this region. You know, right. There's, some, there's a lot of things involved in, in the repopulation of assets. There will always be stuff to mine, right? There will always right. be something to gather, but um, you won't always be able to find it where you expect to find it. Right, yeah. And I think that that plays, again, I mean, the, the reason for that is, is because our economies are separated into these regional economies that, that incentivize transit of goods. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right. we want to make sure that, like, <clears throat> if a town forms, next to a mithril mine because that mithril mine was there and it disappears like it changes the whole flavor of yeah, that exactly it changes also, it entirely I mean, it's, it's incredibly important for an economy right. to actually replenish in general just, right you know mm -hmm. to say that like if you cut down all of the trees in the world you need trees to come back somehow yeah right so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's like so yeah plant some trees yeah. right a tree planting class tree planting <laughs> yeah um, will there be a baconator uh, world boss Ooh. The answer to that in real life is uh, there he is. <laughs> he is a raid boss. Yeah. Uh, we we <laughs> can't comment. We don't want right, to reveal too much design. of the lore. Right. 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 On future lore. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, will we give an amount of people needed to be in a guild to own a castle? Um. No, the I don't know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, there, there's obviously, it, it's dependent on the rest of the server and right. like what their activity is. Right. So, More about like the overall development currently right. of the server and like yeah. how it splits than actual. And who's actually participating in that, yeah. right. right? Like, yeah. you know, it, it could be just a few people, right? right. I mean, yeah, if, right. if well, nobody's like, defending it, nobody's attacking it. If nobody's defending it, well. Right. You know. That would be an interesting scenario, but yeah, it could be, you know, could be as small as. 30 and as big as uh, a couple hundred. <laughs> it yeah, all, it right. all depends on like what the situation is, what mm -hmm. the political landscape. But it is I scalable, mean, right? Like for sure, yeah, absolutely, so it's, totally. It's, it's if that's the what you're looking for, that's yeah. the answer to that, I think. All right, uh, Helix asks, uh, what are we going to do to make orcs great again? Mm. Were orcs ever not great? I, I think orcs were always. Pretty, I think they're pretty cool. great. Orcs pretty cool. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty. They're pretty. They're definitely big league. Um, my, oh. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I said big league, not big league. So that's oh, not okay. <laughs> um, that doesn't make it better. Um, so uh, one one of the orc races, the the Vec, uh, are my favorite race. They are they are. I am such a big fan of now them. Now you now you've just slanted the entire population of some server to Vec. I'm sure I have. I want to see the orc board happen. I want to see the orc. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they they will be great, uh, and I'm pretty excited about them. So. Unbelievable. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing more lore um, announcements <laughs> here probably soon. Relatively soon. Soon trademark. Um, soon trademark TM. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, we're pretty excited about the direction we're going in. Well, I think that's all for the questions today. Congratulations, everybody, on 1.5. Yes, we're that was amazing. To, uh, we're about to post uh, a couple of new um, backer goal and uh, stretch goal in recognition of our latest achievement. And um, 
you know, again, from everybody here at Intrepid Studios, we cannot thank you all enough for the amazing support that you've shown Ashes of Creation. It is absolutely just a reinforcement of our passion and will to get this game done and the way that it should be done. Um, we're happy to see that that all of you are on board and uh, get out there and help us spread the word as you have been doing. We appreciate it. Feel free to join us on Discord. Make sure you guys are on our forums and um, we'll see you out there. We'll see you on Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Wednesday at 3 o'clock. Thank you guys. Bye everybody. Thanks, everyone.